Okay, this is the solution to problems 9 and 10 from exam 2 for Engineering 1301, fall 2018. Okay, so in problem number 9, we're looking for the equivalent resistance between points A and B of this circuit. All right, so what you have to do is walk through this systematically, and what we see is this is a wire, right? So this voltage at this point is, is is the same as this voltage at this point, okay? And so this voltage here is the same as here. And so essentially, you could think of those gold lines as collapsing down to single points. And what that tells you is that 1680 is in parallel with 1280, all right? So I'm gonna call that resistor R1. Okay, so R1 is 1680 in parallel with 1280. All right, so you can compute that. We know the formula for that. All right, next we notice that 890 and 1000 are in series. Okay, so we could call that R2. That'd be 890 plus 1000. All right, and from there, R2, which is this series combination, okay, these two guys in series, is in parallel with 540. All right, so we could write that down. R3 is um, the 1890, which is R2, in parallel with 540. So you compute that, all right? So from there, you kind of visualize all this as collapsing down. You could redraw the circuit, but this all collapses down to R3. So R3 is right here. And R3 would be in series with 960. So we could call that an equivalent resistance R4, which is a series combination of 960 plus R3. All right, so I think you're, hopefully you're seeing the pattern here. Next, we, we see these two comb combinations, R3 plus 960, that's R4, all right? That's in parallel with 3500. So a fifth resistor, R5, 3500 in parallel with R4. All right, so finally that would leave us, you know, essentially R5, and then we'd have connected out here R1, all right, so the total equivalent is going to be R5 plus R1 because those are in series. All right, so I'll leave it to you. Go back and compute each of one of these resistors, but it's just a sequence of calculations, and when you go through it, you get the equivalent resistance being 1.72 K ohms. Okay? So there's problem number nine, All right? Problem 10, I'm wondering what you, how you solved it. Um, what I see immediately jumping out at me is I could easily find I1, all right? So that's why I asked for I1. I was hoping you would want to find a solution there. And, um, you know, the method I would use is let's combine these two resistors in parallel and come up with an equivalent resistance. All right, so we'd have an equivalent circuit that has still the current I1. Notice I2 is gone though when I do that. I've wiped out that current. That's okay, because I can move back to the original circuit to find that. So if you do 600 in parallel with 400, plug that into your calculator, you get 240 ohms as the equivalent resistance. Okay, and darn, I forgot the resistor here. So I forgot the 160. All right, so from there, I1, you know, you can combine, in my head, I combine these two resistances, so that'd be 400 and now it's really easy. I1, just using Ohm's Law, is 20 divided by 400. Okay, all right, cool. Well, to get I2, 
If I had this voltage between these two points, that's the same as these two points. Okay, so I can find that because that voltage, I'll call that VA with respect to the reference here. VA is just going to be um, 240 times I1. And I already know what I1 is. All right, so once I have VA, I think when you plug that in, what you get is uh, 12 volts for VA. That lets me calculate I2, because I know the voltage across here is 12, all right? So 12 divided by 600 gives me um, the answer for I2, all right? And, you know, this is an electrical problem, so the units are obvious. Current is in amps. All right, so there's the solution to problems 9 and 10 from exam 2.